So, I hear you want to get into the Castlevania games. You either saw some gameplay from the games on Twitter, on YouTube, or something like that, or you probably, more than likely, saw the anime on Netflix, you saw the show, and it got you curious about the games, and you want to find out more information about it, alright? Because you probably know little to nothing about this series, and that's fine, okay? So, I'm here to help you out with that. What's going on my fellow Belmonts, it's the Mad Belmont here, and welcome to the first episode in a series that I'm dubbing The Belmont Academy. That's right, this is a series dedicated to me basically talking about Castlevania, talking about different Castlevania related topics, and basically explaining it in a way that is a lot more accessible and a lot more easy to understand for newcomers to the series okay i got the idea for this series from a great buddy of mine here on youtube her name is huggable hipster i'm gonna put her uh, channel right up on the screen and i will put a link to said channel down in the description of this video so when you get done with this be sure to go on over to her channel and show her some love, okay? She definitely deserves it. She's a great content creator. I got the idea for this from her Soulsborne Academy videos, okay? She does kind of the same thing that I'm doing here with Castlevania, but she does it for Soulsborne games, you know, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, those type of games. She does a series like that, so I figured I'd do it for Castlevania, okay? So, with all that being said, Let's get into the topic of this episode. So the topic for this first episode is going to be what is Castlevania specifically because this has a lot of deep complex layers to it. And I'm going to explain it to you in a way that, you know, makes it a lot less intimidating, okay? So Castlevania is a series of action video games, okay? And the subgenres have kind of evolved over the years. Okay, it went from one thing in the late 80s through to the mid 90s, then it evolved into another thing, and it also evolved into another thing right at around the same time in the mid to late 90s. So it's had different forms over the years, okay, and we haven't had a mainline game in almost nine years at this point, so yeah, but. I'm going to go into exactly what those different forms are right now. So let's get into that. All right, so the first form that the Castlevania series took is the one that started it all. The one that established the series as somewhat of a juggernaut in the late 80s all the way through to the mid 90s. This is the 2D side-scrolling action platformer, otherwise known in the community as the Classic Vania. We call it this because this is what the classic games are to us, right? The ones like Castlevania 1, Castlevania 3, the Game Boy games, Bloodlines, Rondo of Blood. These games are classic games to us, okay? These are the ones that started it all. These are the ones that got a lot of us into the franchise, myself included. And this is basically our comfort zone. For most of us in the franchise. Now it does uh, change for different people uh, on what form got them into the series. And I'll go into the other two forms here in a little bit. But yeah. So this type of Castlevania, it's pretty simple. You scroll from left to right or right to left depending on the level that you start. Okay. And you just jump on platforms. You whip things in the face. You fight bosses. You use sub-weapons. It's very simple in design, okay? Very simple to just pick up and play, but it is very, very hard. These games are very challenging, okay? And these games are, like I said, easy to pick up, but hard to master, okay? It took me years to even get to the level that I'm at right now, and... I am not the best Castlevania player in the world. There are a lot of people out here on YouTube that are much, much better than me. But it took me years to even get where I'm at in terms of skill with these games. So, yeah, if you want an experience that, you know, is just 
Very simple, very easy to just pick up and play and drop at any time, especially with the modern collections, you know, letting you save any time that you want to, adding to that pick up and play uh, ability, then these games are the ones for you. These are the ones that, you know, kind of fit into the busybody type of personality. These are the ones that are for the busy people that you know, don't have a whole lot of time to be playing games, but they want to feel like they're making some sort of significant progress in a game, they can just pick up one of these games, play a level or two, feel like they've made a ton of progress, and then just drop it, and then just pick it back up when they get time again. So, that is the Classic Vania. Let's get into the next type of Castlevania, because this one, this one is a big one for a lot of people. Alright, so the next type of Castlevania is the exploration-based platformers. This is commonly referred to in the community as the Egavania. Now, there are some people out there that refer to them as Metroidvanias, but that's mainly because the Metroidvania subgenre has kind of seen an explosion here recently, and people like to, you know, just generalize things, right? They just like to lump things into one thing because it's what they remember. So, yeah, that's generally what happens with these type of games. But they are called Igavanias, okay? And the reason for that is because a man by the name of Koji Igarashi, you younger folks out there might remember him for his great, great debut indie game type of game called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night that kind of, sort of, is a major spiritual successor to a game by the name of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You know, just a little-known game, okay? Uh, from 1997, he basically took the blueprint that Castlevania II Simon's Quest laid out, and that blueprint had a lot of flaws to it, okay? Had a lot of things that need to be ironed out he took that he ironed out all the kinks in that armor and he took a little bit of zelda mechanics a little bit of metroid mechanics and he slapped them all into one game and made one of the greatest video games ever made and in my opinion the greatest video game ever made because i love symphony of the night now this spawned a bunch of different games in this series that are in the same vein as Symphony of the Night. That would be, you have Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow on the Game Boy Advance. Also, you have Castlevania Lament of Innocence on the PS2. That is the one exception to this rule, because a lot of these are 2D based, but Lament of Innocence is the one 3D exception to this rule, and uh, it's actually a great game. If you haven't played Lament of Innocence, I highly recommend it. I'm going to be talking more about that in a future episode, as well as all these different games, okay? But you have the Game Boy Advance games, you have Lament of Innocence, and then you have the DS games, which are... Dawn of Sorrow, so a sequel to Aria of Sorrow. You have Order of Ecclesia and Portrait of Ruin. Okay, so that's all the different games in this style. And this is wildly what got a lot of people into this franchise. Okay, there's a lot of people that got in with the classic Vanias that I talked about. But there were a lot more that got into Castlevania with this style. This open kind of exploration base you know with light rpg mechanics kind of thrown in there type of thing this is what got a lot of people into the series because they just either thought that the games were too hard in the classic style they thought that they were too short you know so when you get these type of games that are take anywhere from 20 to 40 to even 60 hours sometimes to be in the Egovania games, that gets a lot more people into the franchise that, you know, otherwise don't uh, see the appeal of the other games, okay? And so, if you're the type of person that loves their RPGs and needs a game with at least some type of RPG mechanics, 
these games right here are the ones for you if you're type if you're the type of person that needs a lot of gameplay hours. You are definitely going to get a lot of gameplay hours out of these Egovania games, okay? You're going to get anywhere from 20 to 60 hours. You can even extend that too, by the way. I've sunk in 100 hours or more into just Symphony of the Night alone multiple times, okay? Trying to get Alucard up to level 99 in that game. So you get a lot of gameplay hours out of these games. And so, if you're someone that craves more gameplay hours and RPG mechanics and a great story, okay, these games are the ones for you. Because the classic Vanias, they didn't have that much story. These do. These Egovanias, they definitely do. And they have some great stories, okay, in this type of game. So, yeah. Please be sure to uh, give the Egovanias a look if that's what your uh, barometers kind of are for a game. So, with that being said, let's go into the last type of Castlevania. Alright, so the next type of Castlevania game is the 3D-Vania. This started around the mid to late 90s on the N64, okay? And it went all the way into the Xbox 360 and PS3 era. And... This type of Castlevania, this era of the series, is basically the wild, wild west in terms of subgenres. You've got Soulsborne prototypes in the N64 games, which, yes, I will be covering that in a future video. Might not be in this series, might just be its own separate thing. But yeah, I'll be covering that for sure, okay? But yeah, you've got the Soulsborne prototypes in the N64 games, you've got a DMC clone in Curse of Darkness on the PS2, and then finally, you've got the Lords of Shadow games, 1 and 2, on the PS3 and 360, that were basically a classic God of War clone, okay? So think, kind of the gameplay of God of War 1 through 3, that type of hack and slash gameplay, but in a Castlevania setting. Okay, and then also in the middle of those two games, you have Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate, which is a 2.5D side scrolling action platformer, uh, exploration based platformer, too, that is basically a Egovania type. Okay, so there is a lot in just this era alone that is radically different from. Anything that I've mentioned before, anything that I mentioned in the classic Vanias, anything that I mentioned in the Egomanias, these games are wild and they vary in uh <clears throat> they vary in quality, okay, but they're all pretty fun in their own right. Okay. Some are a lot better than others, but again, they're all fun in their own right. I have fun with every single one of these games. Okay, especially when it comes to Curse of Darkness. That game is so much fun. And yes, I will be covering that in a future video, so be looking forward to that. But if you like different types of games, if you like 3D graphics, you don't like 2D graphics so much, then this is definitely the type of Castlevania you should get into. Okay, if you like these 3D cinematic type of games these ones are definitely the ones that you're gonna be want to uh keep your eye on basically especially the 360 games and the ps3 games and the lords of shadow games those are the ones that are the best looking as far as uh 3d goes these are the ones that are the most cinematic these are the ones that will probably appeal to you the most if you're that type of gamer that focuses on graphic fidelity and focuses on uh, a cinematic gameplay experience then definitely 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 look into Curse of Darkness and the Lords of Shadow games okay so that is pretty much it let's go to the outro so that is a basic rundown on what exactly Castlevania is and the different forms that the games have taken over the years. I hope that you enjoyed this video, okay? And I hope that it helped you out as far as kind of 
getting a better understanding as to what the series is, okay? If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like on it. It really helps me out. It shows YouTube that I don't suck, okay? And if you like this content and you want to see more of it, then hit that subscribe button. There's a bell that will appear right next to it, okay? You can click that bell and then you get notified whenever I upload, okay? Also, if you want to show some extra support, you can hit that join button down below, okay? It'll be right next to the subscribe button, okay? And you become you can become a channel member. When you do that, you get cool perks such as shout out to the end of my videos, you get access to videos like this early, okay? Among other things. You will see all of the list of perks when you click on that join button, okay? So, with all that being said, have fun on the hunt, my fellow Belmonts. I will see you in the next video, and peace out.